The laser cutter that we have here at the Makerspace is a full spectrum Muse laser cutter, which has some great safety features and also has an intelligent interface with it that I will show you how to use before we do that. We need to take a look at the various parts of this laser cutter. And the first part I want to tell you about is actually underneath it here. Down here under the laser cutter is the water chiller. This is filled with water and a pump that pumps water into the laser cutter to keep the laser cool while it operates. And it will not work if that isn't on. So before we do any cutting, we're gonna to have to turn it on and it will sound a little something like this. That's perfectly normal. That's the water chiller saying that it's not up to speed. And then when it gets up to speed, it quiets down. Now, while it's running, it's constantly making this hissing sound, this, this uh, noise that is going to make talking during this video a little bit difficult. So we'll turn this off for now as we take a look inside the laser cutter at the remainder of the parts that we want to look at. The next part is over here. This is a high powered fan that draws air out of the body of the laser cutter and vents it to the outside. And every time the laser cutter runs, it will automatically turn on this fan. It's also very noisy, so we'll leave it off for now. So inside the laser cutter here, we have here along the back is the laser and you can see the vent for the air here. Now the laser runs here and the water runs across it to keep it cool. And when it fires a laser, it bounces off a mirror here in the corner. That mirror then bounces it over here to a mirror that's mounted on the movement system here. And the movement system then bounces that laser to another mirror on this carriage of the movement system, the head of it, which then bounces it down into your material. You can see right here at the very bottom here, there is a lens and a focal system that focuses that laser as tight as it can be. And the last part, of course, is the lid that closes. And the laser cutter can sense when the lid is closed by the little magnet on the side right here. So once it's closed and if the water is on, it would be all ready to laser cut right now. So now that we've had the opportunity to look at the parts of the laser cutter, think about for a second, what is the most dangerous part of this laser cutter and where do we need to be concerned? And come up with as many answers as you can while I give you this second to think. So what did you come up with? Most people think that the laser is the most dangerous part of the laser cutter, but with the fact that it won't even fire without the lid closed, really, the laser is not that big of a deal. You can't get to it while it's running. Also, in a similar way, this movement system, while it is a little bit of a problem because it will move while the lid is up, generally speaking, isn't much of a problem. So what is like the biggest problem in this laser cutter? It is surprisingly the material that you will use. Because if you use settings that are wrong for the material, it's very likely, in fact, it's not even a question of if, but just a matter of when, we will have a fire here. So fire concern is the biggest concern with the laser cutter, and we need to be ready for when that happens. So we have a couple of rules for using the laser cutter, and they are pasted on the laser cutter and on the wall so that you can refer to them if you ever need to, and they are this. Number one, we're going to make sure that there aren't any flammables on or around the laser cutter. Keep them stored far away, especially if they're chemicals. Number two, do not ever, for any reason, attempt to override the locking mechanism to make it so that this will run while it's open. Yes, you can do that, but if you do, you'll be violating a rule and we will kick you out of the makerspace and not let you come back if you're doing that. Number three, do not ever leave the laser cutter to run unattended. With 3D printing, I said watch that first layer, but then you can walk away from it because it's gonna take a long time. But for laser cutting, it happens quick. And so there's no reason for you to leave while the laser cutter is running. And the chance of something going wrong in your settings 
and causing a fire is so high that you are not allowed to leave while this thing is running. So make sure that you are here the whole time and checking on this while it's running to make sure that nothing bad happens. So how do we use the laser cutter? Well, in the software, there are three settings that you need to be made aware of. They are speed, power, current, and passes. Speed describes how fast the laser moves while it's cutting. Power describes how much power it's outputting. It can be just a very light laser or a very strong one. Current describes how intense that laser is. And passes describes the number of times that it goes around. So think for just one second. If you were to increase the speed but lower the power, what effect would that have? Well, what does increase in the speed do, do you think? Does it make it more or less hot and likely to cause a fire? Increasing the speed, making the laser go faster, decreases the chance of a fire because it's spending less time in any one place as it's doing its cutting. What happens though if you increase the power? Well, increasing the power obviously will have a greater chance of starting a fire also with the current. And generally speaking, we increase the power and current together as we go. What about increasing the number of passes? Well, that's usually done if at full power and at a slow speed, you can't get a complete cut, so you'll cut through twice. Or if you're scoring or scorching your material, you might try lowering the power, increasing the speed, and just going around a bunch of times to do your cut. Every material in, that you put into your laser cutter is going to be just a little bit of art as much as it is the science. We write down here and keep a log of what uh, settings we used for various materials, but it might be different next time because you've got a slightly different material for it. So keep adjusting your settings. Be willing to play always. Be ready to test your settings before you jump in. So what to do in the inevitable case that a fire starts in the laser cutter? Well, we've got a procedure up here that you can follow along if you ever come to that. Number one, don't panic. Stop, relax for just one second. It's probably not that big a fire and it'll be okay. We can take care of it. Then stop that laser cutter. There is a menu here and you can just hit the stop button. It will end and you can even hit the home button to get the laser out of the way. Then. Open up the lid, and underneath the laser cutter right here, you will find a sheet of acrylic and some fireproof gloves. The sheet of acrylic is for smothering that fire with, getting it away from the oxygen, and the fireproof gloves are so that you will not hurt your hands as you are pulling that out. Then, you take that burning material and you drop it in the bucket of water that we have right here next to the 3D printer. That's what this is for, putting out fires. Now, when you do that, that material is spent. Do not try picking it up and putting it back in the laser cutter and going with it. It's wet now. It's not going to work as well. So go ahead and just toss that material, get a new piece of material, and start again. So now that we've had the opportunity to talk about what could go wrong and what to do in that case, let's get to cutting on the laser cutter. Let's do a quick project, get your certification badge made, and make this happen.